Hey guys, it's John Michael with The New Adventure. And this week we get the opportunity to go through a Class A motorhome with my Uncle David. So David, what do you have here? This is a Tiffin 34PA open road gas uh, motorhome. So why don't you take us for a tour and let's see what we can get into. Here right. we go. Let's go see it. Tell me about this rig. Well, you know, I've had several of these before and this one is very unique, uh, nothing special. You've got your shade, so like if you're running down the highway and the sun's too bright on you, you can pull that down and keep the sun off your side of your face. Or if you don't like the way the guy in the car looks. That's exactly right. You just, right, flip, right. You just flip them off and pull that down. There you go. Down. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the seats uh, are nice. Um, They're crazy they, comfortable. I said it a little bit ago, yeah. so I got kicked out. But. So anyway, that's, that's the deal on that. Uh, you have your backup camera and then your radio and your CD and it's all Bluetooth and everything's set up there. You have, uh, I believe this is a 33 inch TV, but I'm not really sure. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't use it that much, but it's, um, you can watch that when you're riding down the road. Uh, and we have, and this uh, one is a fifth and a sound. And maybe not normally, you, but your yeah, passengers I do can this. watch it. I do this when they're Because you're it. focused on keeping everyone safe. 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 Safety. I've always, I've always had an A class. C classes are fantastic also. It's a trade off. I have my bunk bed here that I can drop my bunk bed down once I get there. An A class, C class, that bunk bed's always there. I think whatever you get used to is what you like. And I've just, I've always got used to this. My girls are always standing up, walking around, getting something to eat and something while we're driving, and they can still see out the window. And you can still do that on a C class, but we just got used to this type. And this is what we like. Uh, it also has like, when I go camping, you know, you've got this little table area and I can pull back and, you know, like sit here and eat my breakfast or whatever, okay. or computer table. Um, you've got all the little plugs to... You're all reclined out, we had to leave back. I did. Oh, one thing I like about this one is, um, let's see if I can find the right button. I like a rocker, but I had to settle for this. <laughs> so I'm okay with that, because in the evening I want to sit and watch TV, and uh, so it's nice to be able to properly feed up. How many people does this sleep? Two in the master. I got two. Four, five, six, and if they're little, seven and eight. Okay. Depend on the size. So you also, you said you travel, you and your wife, your daughter, and then your grandkids mm -hmm. are with you quite often as well. Yes. So you've met the grandkids before. They're Alan's kids with the Airstream. So they come with them, they hang out with y'all, and y'all yes. take them, I know, once a year to Disney, right? We took them to Disney this so year. So where yeah. do they sleep? All over in a tent? Let me tell you this. I took my grandkids and they get in my memory foam bed and me and Mima all sleep on Oh, that's not right. <laughs> that's, that's not right. right. Maybe next year we'll change that up a little bit. But that's <laughs> where my grandpa. That, <laughs> this is the setup and, and then your stove, your, you know, your cooktop. We never use this. I was going to say, do this you guys what, cook in the camper? Is, this is what they call a stove where you cook things. Uh, <laughs> We've we, heard of this thing before. <laughs> we use this type of stove where you cook things. But this is the um, convection oven, and um, the uh, Gene and, and them using they really love theirs. We just use ours for heating water and stuff. And uh, so, show me your plug thing. Uh, I think this right here is pretty cool because I was saying where the plugs at. Right. And it's like right here, you got your plugs and your what do you call these things? USBs. USB. So it's got your USBs, your plugs, and then when you're finished with it, you just put it back down. Plus, it has receptacles all up here. Uh, it has an exhaust fan, so like. For those who cook, it does <laughs> it does take the fumes and takes it out. 
And, and you also have good. a fantastic, is this fantastic fan? This is a fantastic fan, and the nicest thing about it is, before I took it home, I went in and had put a, a, a dark cover over it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Because in the place, there's so much light in here, mm -hmm. and Kelly's sleeping here, mm -hmm. so this takes knocks all the light off. Plus, when you're running down the highway, you can open your hood or whatever, or if it's raining, you can open your hood. We need to do that, that's nice. Yeah, yeah it, it does make it nice. Refrigerator and stuff is, is rather large, it's, you know, it's a residential grade refrigerator, uh, 24 inch depth. Is it propane and no. electric or just electric? No, it was a drawback to me. I like a propane refrigerator. They have propane, propane electric, or just electric. And this is just electric. And so I have four golf cart batteries to fuel this beast. So when I'm going down the highway, my generator's got it. But when I pull in somewhere, go out to eat or something, I've got four, I've got those batteries now hold it for about eight to 10 hours. Okay. And then the batteries are dead. So. I don't like that, but then again, we don't we don't camp off the grid that often. Right. So that's not. Let me rephrase that. We don't camp off the grid <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> if we're off the grid, we're broke down somewhere. <laughs> Help! <laughs> so now I haven't decided if I like it yet or not. But this is where I turn on my lights, or roll up and down that galley shade. Uh, it tells me where my you know my fresh water tank is low. Grave, you know, it tells you what's going on. Propane's full. It tells you what everything is. If you want to run your heating and air conditioning, you just hit that and it takes it to your heating and air. And this right here controls your slides. Everything is from this panel. So if this panel goes out, when you pop that out, it's just it's just a little thin like a pancake. So, but that's that's the brains of this outfit, that and Diane. Uh, the skylight in here, so when like, if you want an extra light, you got it. And if you don't want extra light. Or... But look at the light above there. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's, it's a very nice shower. It's a very comfortable shower. Uh, I wish that seat wasn't there, but I think they have that there because of the electronics behind it. Yeah, that gave them room to work. And uh, it does come with a washer dryer. I opted not to get the washer dryer. We Do you like, have regrets on that? No, we never go anywhere long enough to have okay. the washer and dryer clothes. And all campgrounds have washers and dryers in them. And uh, so we got that. And of course, the bathroom lights. Uh, and then the automatic fan lid. And you can turn everything on from here. And, uh, the ceiling fan is nice. It has several speeds. Um, I don't seem to feel the air as much as I would have thought, but it's still a nice feature and it, it keeps the air moving. Um, once you get in bed, then you can turn off or on your lights outside from oh, right cool. here. Okay. So like if, you know, you forgot to turn the lights off, you can shut them off here. Or if somebody's prowling around out there, you can turn the lights you off. You have a window on either side? I have a window on both sides. That's like... This window, Diane kind of gets cheated, number one. Uh, it has your, your day and night shade, but she's just looking at the other slide. <laughs> Sorry, babe. <laughs> I get to look at everything. <laughs> so, anyway, that's how it looks. They, they deck them out nicely, the, the furnishings and all that stuff. And you have a lot of storage under the bed. Wow. Yeah, that's and, nice. Uh, so, you get a lot of stuff. You know, we don't even have our stuff filled up. All of the lights in the cabinets. Are lit by like this, but the ones underneath are, are motion detected. Um, underneath, you have lots of storage under this camper, a tremendous amount of storage. And um, so, when you open the panels, are all lit, so you know what you're looking for. See, so you have three TVs in here, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one, two, three, yes. Okay. So, what is this weigh? About 26,000 pounds. And you feel that gas motor does it just fine for you? I have not had one problem. Uh, it doesn't strain, it doesn't do anything. Uh, the only time you know it's back there, I, I pull a Jeep with it, 5,000, mm -hmm. I think it's about 5,000 pounds for the Jeep. And the only time you can, well, let me take that back, I don't really notice that Jeep's back there. Yeah. When I start up a mountain, like if I'm going somewhere, I, I know that I'm pulling something, and I'll go 45-ish instead of 60, Yeah. and I'm fine. On the open roads, like going down 485 or 95, I can run 70, 75 miles an hour, but you don't want to run 75 miles an hour for something this big, so I stay around 70. So you have, 70. Do you have a normal driver's license, or do you have to change your license when you got this? You know, uh, you should have to have a CDL license, but you don't. You can just have a regular driver's license. Okay. Um, I was licensed, I drove a school bus when I was 16 years old, get that. <laughs> you could, that was in the old days. And uh, so I, I was certified to drive something big, I was trained on how to do that. So that's helped me through these years. I traded from diesel to gas 
just because I was concerned about the diesel air brakes, air ride suspension. Uh, you know, you turn it off and it drops down, you crank it and it lifts up, which is fine and it's fun until you start thinking this thing's out of warranty. And I, Just I because you're not as familiar with diesel. Yeah, not, other familiar. people might prefer that. But. So I went back to this gas and the gas will come off the light faster than a diesel. Maybe not the 500 horsepower diesel, but it'll come off the light faster than most diesels and it will keep up with them until I get into the mountains or something. But but where do you camp mainly? I mean, you're mainly I'm east coast and... I'm mainly county, uh, going to Florida. I'll run to Maine and nothing between here and Maine will keep me off the speed limit. So one of the big things for us when we went to the camper we did, we switched to a toy hauler, which gave us the capability to carry more water, staying gone longer. Because we like to camp, we like the boondock. You stay in the campground more often. But what is your water capabilities? How much water do you hold? It'll hold 70 gallons of fresh water. Okay. 50 gallons of black water. And about 66 gallons of gray water. Okay. So when you camp though, predominantly, you're in a campground, right? We're plugged up all the time. I have dual air conditioners on the roof. And the front air conditioner is a heat pump. So a lot of times if the weather's not really cold, I'll just run the heat pump and save my gas. So the campground, I can use their power to, to fuel the thing. But when I'm running down the highway, when it's hot weather, uh, anything above say 90 degrees, uh, well anything above 85 degrees, I've got to run the roof airs. So you run your generator, and I have a more powerful generator. I, this is a 50 amp coach, but my generator produces 65 amps. Okay. So I've got more than enough power. Well, you're conditioning a lot more square footage than a truck is, so right. I didn't even think about it like that. And for me, I don't care if my camper side, I'm not back there. So. No, that's right, that's right. Well, I have 30,000 30, BTUs overhead, plus my dash hair. Okay. So how long is this camper? From the nose to the tail, it's 36 feet long. Okay. And then you pull the Jeep, so... The Jeep Grand Cherokee, you know, and I should know how long it is, and I don't know. I'm going to say it's 15, 16 feet long. And then plus, there's about a three feet for the hitch. So 36, 46, 56, probably 60 feet going down the road. Okay. I've never measured it should. Um, and the height matters in a lot of places that we go. Um, especially you get up on the parkway, you know, you're going under a tunnel, you know, you got to get in the middle, so I'll ride right down the middle lane, you know, yeah. because the height, because uh, we're like, we're like 12 no, feet. No, we have to do that, yeah. Yeah, we're like 12 feet, 9 inches tall, and I don't really trust that, depends on how much air you got in your tires, yeah. so uh, I kind of get the edge, I get towards the middle to make sure I can get through And they there. come up on you quick. Mm -hmm, <laughs> you just cruise down, we about had a situation where we skinned off the top of our air condition one time so yeah. we didn't but we got close um the width of it does that bother you no 102 inches or something like yeah. that it's, it's like eight foot one inch two inches and it's never seemed to be an issue it bothers yeah. diane on that side it looks like i'm gonna hit every mailbox yeah going down the road but um it, it's i'm just normal with it so do when, you, I'm, when i'm driving i just watch the fog line in that mirror okay do you line your knee up with the yellow line have you tried that no, but I've, that's something they teach us with the fire trucks. You know, when you're driving down, you put your left knee on the yellow line. And oh, the really? Way aesthetically, yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know that. I don't know that. I never heard that. I just so if you ever do try driving, put your I knee just on watch, line. I watch. You know, in the little Google eye mirrors on on this thing, I watch. Well, it's got. I don't know what they're called. The lower half of the thing it shines to the ground. I just watch my lines. As long as I'm in my lane and on, and not in a ditch, I'm good. That's right. kind of what I'm watching for. So, the length of this comes into play. Mm -hmm. Not only with just general driving, but it gives you some restrictions. So what have you noticed that is it too long for anything or have you had problems with I that? I have not had any problem with the length. The problem that you have is when you're towing a vehicle, uh, I have a tow a Jeep, you can't back up. So wherever you wherever you point the front, the decision's made. Uh, you, you can't back it up. You have to stop and unhook the Jeep. So uh, before we have gone down the highway and I'm like, oh man, I'm on the wrong road. But not like 485, not like a big road, but like a six-lane road, just just a big road. So I, I've tried to hang a couple of U-turns before. Don't quite make it most times, and then you have to stop, make everybody mad while you unhook the Jeep. Oh, yeah. You have to stop all the traffic both ways while you unhook the Jeep and listen to listen to your spouse get out and tell you, oh, you shouldn't have done that, you should listen to her. So <laughs> she's that one that's got to get out while I'm putting it back into... Because you got to take it out of neutral and put it back in the drive, unhook everything. Everybody's tooting their horns like they don't see you sitting there trying to get out of the way. And uh, so I've done that probably three or four times. 
total. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes it just looks like you can almost make it and you go for it. Uh, pulling in a filling station, it's really easy in this if you've picked the right lane because when you're running down the interstate and I'm like, okay, I need gas, I try to get gas at a half tank. What's uh, your fuel tank size? It holds 80 gallons. Okay. And so, and I get about eight miles at a gallon, somewhere right around there. So, so he's getting better fuel economy than we are. <laughs> <laughs> and, and saving 50 cents a gallon. And saving. Yeah. But when I make a commitment to go into a gas station, if the gas, if the pumps are facing the building, pumps are facing the building, and I can't get anywhere except for the inside lanes, I can't go there because I can't make, make that turn. turn and get out of there. So I've got to always be on the outside pumps. And, um, and then a bunch of cars might pull it around you and mm -hmm. you get stuck. Yeah. yeah. But, but when I get into a campground, if I don't have a camp, a pull through site, I'll drop my Jeep as soon as I pull in so that I can back up, I can maneuver, I can turn around, I can do something. So then at that point though, you're only trying to park 36 foot mm -hmm. where I'm parking 56 foot. That's right. So I'm having trouble or 58 foot, but I'm That's having right. trouble getting into a parking spot in a campground where you're able to just back this in and you're fine. And you know, I never thought about that, but yes, you're right. I'm cheating. So they're straight off on all sides of it. Mm -hmm. All right. So. I know when we go camping, we bring our kayaks, we stack them on top of our truck. You camp with us. How do you get your kayaks there? On the top of the Jeep. So I've got racks on top of the Jeep, so I'll put the kayaks up there and, and move on. My first my first motorhome, I put some two by fours on the roof and put bolts right through the roof with the nuts shining down. Do you don't want to do that on this one? No, I hadn't thought about <laughs> it, but I kind of decided not to. No, better not. That was back in the day. Right? <laughs> But, <laughs> cool. and, and I put a canoe up there and I had to take the thorf out of the canoe so it would fit over the air conditioning unit. And we took it up to Maine and it was just too much trouble to get it up and get it down. I'm like, yeah, I ain't going to do this no more. But uh, anyway, and there's another reason I'm not going to do it no more. <laughs> this is a fiberglass roof, it's not a rubber roof. And so I'm not, not drilling a hole in this one. Okay. When you have a Tiffin, you can call Bob Tiffin, man that owns the place. It says Tiffin on the truck, you can call him. And he will take your call. Uh, my first motorhome, I had a problem seven years after it was out of warranty. Uh, seven years old, it was out of warranty. The floor buckled. He said, it shouldn't have buckled, son. I'll send a driver to pick it up. Sent a driver to North Carolina, picked it up, paid the fuel, took it back to Alabama, fixed it, brought it back to me. I had two different problems, and he did that twice. They're just the best people. That's Tiffin Motorhomes. You don't get no better than that. Well, David, thank you. I appreciate you showing us around. Um, thanks for letting us see this. And uh, thanks for coming on the channel. We Enjoyed appreciate it. it. Take care. We'll see you next see time. You. Uh -huh. All right, guys. Thanks for checking it out. See you next week on The New Adventure.